All right, so in this video, I'm going to walk through the steps uh, required to create a C grid for an airfoil. But unlike uh, another video that I've done where I created it in kind of this multi block approach, this case is going to be all done through extrusion. So we're actually going to create a normal hyperbolic extrusion around the airfoil to create the C grid itself, the C topology, and then create a translational extrusion downstream in the wake. So the total, the entire grid will consist of two blocks both created using extrusion. And the benefit here is that by doing it through extrusion and the hyperbolic extrusion in particular around the airfoil to get that C topology, we don't have to do any post smoothing operations using the elliptic solver. The grid is already going to be very smooth just due to the nature of that. And you'll notice in the boundary layer region, it's going to be very orthogonal uh, and everything. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the points on the airfoil itself. Um, so I'm going to set up my defaults. You can see I've set up my default dimension to 51. Okay, that means that any connector or grid curve I create is going to have 51 points. So I'm going to grab the curves for my airfoil. This is an airfoil with a sharp trailing edge, so it's a perfect candidate for a C-type topology where we're going to have this branch connector that's going to be coming out the back. So I'm going to create some connectors, and just so it's easier to see, I'm going to turn on the points. So you can see those points on the connector. Now I wanna, what I really want to do is I want to distribute them properly. Okay, Right now they're equally distributed, but I need to cluster them towards the leading edge to resolve that curvature. I need to cluster them towards the trailing edge. There's not a lot of curvature at the trailing edge, but there are going to be some flow phenomena that we want to capture uh, as this angle is going through various, or this air, uh, airfoil is going through various angles of attack. Okay, So I'm going to grab my spacing constraint select those and at the leading edge I'm going to use 0 0.001 it's pretty good for capturing the curvature at the leading edge this is a, a unit length and at the trailing edge I'm going to use 0 0.01 again we just want it tight enough that we're going to get some nice clustering or grid spacing at the trailing edge to help capture some of the stuff that's going on back there uh, when we run this calculation all right, so I'm pretty happy with the distribution of points on my airfoil. The next thing I need to do is I need to create a branch connector. We're actually going to be extruding off of the branch connector, the upper surface, and the lower surface simultaneously. So I'm going to change my default to 101 points this time. So that way, any connectors I create have 100 points on them or 101 points on them. And I'm going to create a branch connector that comes off the trailing edge and then goes to an X location of 50. Okay, So now I've got this long connector coming out the trailing edge. This is my branch. And again, just so it's easier to see, I'm going to select that and turn the points on. Okay, Now what I want to do is I want to make sure the spacings here at the trailing edge are the same. Okay, So you can see this is a pretty large spacing uh, up against a couple of smaller spacings. So I'm just going to grab that and my spacing values still typed in here so I can just hit enter. And so now all of the spacings at this trailing edge are the same. Okay, So I have this nice branch connector, an upper and lower surface connector. Now, the reason I extended this about 50 is, you know, for an airfoil calculation, um, you, you kind of want the far field to be significantly far from the airfoil. I've found that about 100 cord lengths is good. Uh, for this particular application, what we're going to end up getting is we're going to end up getting about 100 cord lengths in the vertical direction, about 50. Uh, in the front just due to the nature of the C-type topology, this extrusion. So what I've done is I've, I've created this 50 cord lengths behind it and so we're going to create this nice C topology and then I'm going to create kind of this wake block that extends about another 100 cord lengths so that way we can capture any wake effects before they before they basically pass through the outlet of our domain. All right. So I'm going to now grab all of the connectors and go to create extrude normal. Now, this is where a lot of people will get stuck. Okay, I'm going to delete all of the edges. Instead of doing auto assemble, I, I would basically expand this assemble special frame, delete all the edges, and I'm going to manually define the edge for the extrusion. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to pick the branch connector. I want to create, click the upper connector, the lower, and then the branch one more time. And by doing that and saving the edge, I can extrude 
in this direction, basically off the branch in the vertical direction, off the airfoil, and then off the branch down as well. Okay, so this is going to allow us to use this branch to extrude in both directions. Okay, and that's going to help us create that seed topology. All right. So the first thing you'll notice is that the orientation is wrong. So I can flip that. Okay. So now it's oriented properly. We can see what the extrusion is going to look like. And before I enter any parameters, one of the things that I want to do is I want to set up some boundary conditions. And what do I mean by boundary conditions? Well, when we extrude, what's going to happen, if you imagine this, is we extrude off of this whole thing, we're actually going to get some splaying, okay? unless we specify that we want a constant X condition here, okay? which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to say, I want this to be constant X. So that way, we're going to get this nice C shape when we extrude. Okay? If you extrude and you notice that it's kind of this grid is kind of splaying or this extrusion is kind of splaying out, that's just an indication that you didn't set up a nice constant X boundary condition. So I'm going to set constant X. Now why constant X? Because that's the X direction. We want that to be a constant X. Okay? So I'm going to set the boundary condition. And then I'm going to go back to the attributes panel. And we've already flipped the orientation, so it's the extrusion is oriented properly. The next thing I'm going to do is set up my initial grid spacing. So this value is based off of the Y plus you want to achieve. This is going to be for a case with Reynolds number of a million. We want a Y plus of 1, so it's going to be resolved. So our initial delta S we can calculate to be 2.35 e to the minus 5. And a growth rate of 1.2. You don't want to exceed 1.2. This is going to be a nice gradual growth rate. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a total height stop criteria. So again, we want this thing to go 50 to 100 cord lengths away from the airfoil. Knowing that, instead of just clicking extrude, 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 extrude one layer at a time, I can set up a total height stop criteria so it'll stop once it reaches a certain value. So I'm going to set this to 120. What this does is, you know, it's going to look at the length of those grid curves as it's extruding. And because there's going to be some curvature to them, I've kind of added 20% buffer to that. So it's going to go a little bit beyond 100. And then I can kind of back off the extrusion one step at a time until I get what I want. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to turn down, initially, I'm going to turn down this volume smoothing parameter to 0.01. .01. The volume smoothing works to equal like equalize the volume of the elements on the extruded front okay so it's going to try and achieve a nice equal volume or area in each of these elements on that front but what I want to do is I kind of want to preserve the spacing initially okay if you don't do this what you're going to see is you're going to see it trying to equalize those volumes and so you're going to get these weird shapes on your front okay so what I'm going to do is I turn that down and that's going to help preserve this tight spacing for a few layers and then I'm going to turn it up so I can kind of ramp it up as I'm extruding. So I'm going to go to the run tab and I'm going to run 40 steps for now. Okay, So you can see again we keep that clustering that we had down here on the airfoil trailing edge. We keep that clustering as we march away. If you notice that this grid is very smooth, it's nice and normal to the surface, it's orthogonal. It's a great candidate for, for meshing. Okay, Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up that volume smoothing. I'm going to go back to 0 0.5 because now what I want to do is I want to kind of spread out this clustering and I want nice equal cells on my front. And I'm going to run this. I'm just going to type in 100 because it's going to stop automatically once it reaches my criteria. And this basically says it's met the total height stop condition. So I'm going to delete the last layer. And if I come out here, I'm going to back off maybe one more. Okay. So this is what I'm going to get. And then I can check and see how far away we are. We're about negative 49, so we're about 50 cord lengths in front of the airfoil. So I'm going to accept that. And that's my C grid. Okay, that's the C topology. Again, we we didn't have to create like an actual uh, set of connectors out here in the far field that take a C shape, build the grid, smooth it using an elliptic solver. We were able to just quickly generate this via extrusion, and it's nice and smooth. So if I zoom in here, you can see we have a nice, smooth, orthogonal mesh. All right, so the last step is I want to create the remainder of my wake. Okay. The easiest way to do this is just to grab the connectors here at the back and create a translational extrusion. 
click done. We're going to create a single block. Okay, both those connectors we can extrude into a single block or domain. I'm going to extrude in the x direction a distance of 100. Okay, so I've typed in 100 for my distance, and that's basically going to give us a grid that's 150 cord lengths downstream of the airfoil. Okay, so sufficiently far to capture any wake effects. And then I'm extruding 20 steps. Okay, so we can run and click OK. And you can see we've created the translational extrusion and we've got that wake block. Now I'm pretty picky and I want the spacings of this wake block to be about the same here. This jump in cell size is a little too much for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab those connectors. I'm going to go grid distribute and the first thing I'm going to do is change their function to hyperbolic tangent. Okay, And then I'm going to set up the spacings to be the same and it's actually three. If I come in here and measure this spacing, you can kind of measure that and see down here in the message window that's about three. So I just type in three here and click OK. Let's see. Functions, apply, spacing on these guys. We want a spacing of three. There we go. OK. All right, so we got a nice spacing there at the trailing edge. So we're, we're done. We have our seat topology. We've got enough resolution in the wake. Okay, we're, We've gone down sufficiently far uh, downstream from the airfoil to capture any wake effects. And again, this was done doing two extrusions. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let us know.